I'm not going to talk about it right now because if uh, people get it wrong, it can make the problem worse rather than better. Hello and welcome to another one of our Ask the Expert series here at Boat How To. We're Nigel Calder and Jan Attenstedt and we answer your questions. And today we got another question from somebody here on YouTube that was posted in a comment to a previous video. And the question is the following. In theory, I can take my lithium battery, meaning lithium ion battery, down to 10%. Is it okay for the battery if this is done regularly or should I upsize my battery bank to avoid regular discharge to that level? Um, well, I think you're right in theory, but in practice... Well, it's fine. Um, and these batteries, are, particularly if it's lithium ion phosphate, they're designed to be cycled 100% um, of capacity uh, up to several thousand times with, with many of them. So it's fine as long as the cells don't get out of balance and that they're all being pulled down to around 10%. But uh, over time, if the uh, cell balancing within the battery isn't being effective, for example, many of these cell balancing devices require the battery to be fully recharged periodically and the balancing is down on the top end of the charge cycle. If the cells start to get out of balance, uh, you could have one that's at 20% and one that's at 0% and then we're going to run into trouble. So the, the key here is not the depth of discharge so much as the fact that we have a decent cell balancing capability and that it's activated on a reasonably regular basis to keep the cells in balance. Also quite important if you have these like so-called drop-in lithium battery, lithium ion batteries, and you have like a multiple of them in parallel, then yeah, because so really make sure that you take care of the manufacturer's um, yeah, prescriptions for the installations and don't put more in parallel than they specify because that's actually an issue because you don't have a BMS that's connecting the battery and like yeah, basically balancing across batteries. So let, let's talk about that briefly, Jan, um, because we're seeing um, large series connections to get to high voltages in electric propulsion, 400, 500, 600, 700 volts sometimes. And not all of these batteries are set up to balance in series. So that's really important. If, if you've got maybe on a, on a 24 volt, but we've got two 12 volt batteries in series, we need to make sure that there's balancing between the battery blocks. And then the other issue, if we have multiple parallel batteries, uh, we could have um, one cell in one of those parallel batteries that, that is drifting out of balance with the other cells. So we, we need all of those cells to be balanced across all of the batteries, uh, whether we're in, in series or parallel. And most of these drop-in batteries do not have any capability for balancing between batteries. So then we might need to initiate a process ourselves for balancing, which I do on my own boat, for example. We have batteries in series and parallel, and uh, I have a process for balancing those batteries, and I'm not going to talk about it right now, because if uh, people get it wrong, they can make the problem worse rather than better. So that's something <laughs> we're not going to discuss in a five-minute clip on YouTube. Mm, yeah, well, and that brings us to our usual topic at the end of the videos. If you want to learn more, check out our courses at boathow2.com. For example, in our advanced marine electrics program, we currently have like a whole um, module on lithium ion battery installations and how to do it safely and standard compliance. And um, yeah, there's actually way more to it than just getting a drop in battery and replacing it, uh, replacing your old uh, lead acid battery. So if you are thinking of installing lithium ion batteries on your boat, then definitely check that out, boathowto.com, and we hope to see you soon.